Canary Islands, a paradise for sun-loving tourists. For us, the island holds quite another fascination, the Cumbre Vieja Volcano. The brittle western slope of the volcano is covered in clefts and fissures where water has collected. And now for the interesting part. By placing several bombs in carefully calculated spots, we can use thermonuclear explosions to heat that water so that it will evaporate instantaneously. If you had paid attention in your physics classes, you would know that such a sudden evaporation of water would create sufficient pressure to shatter the volcano's brittle slope and send it crashing into the sea. Can you guess what comes next? That's right, a tsunami. Waves 200 meters high will charge across the Atlantic with the speed of an airplane. The tsunami will sweep across the east coast of the United States. New York will disappear in an apocalyptic flood, taking with it the self-proclaimed rulers of the world who are currently squabbling in blind incompetence at the UN headquarters. The resulting vacuum of power will be filled by our followers, some of whom have been biding their time in key positions for decades. They will take control and lead humankind to a new golden age. The new laws would vest the Premier with the power to unilaterally declare a pandemic and then extend it in three-month blocks without the approval of MPs. Worst of all, they would grant the government almost unrestricted powers to impose draconian restrictions like shutting businesses, restricting movement, cancelling public events and increased fines in the tens of thousands of dollars for ordinary citizens. Opposition leader Matthew Guy says he's prepared to fight tooth and nail against these proposed new laws. He joins me now from Melbourne. Matthew Guy, thank you for your time. This is about as extreme as I've ever seen. It's more extreme than federal terror legislation, which I've uh, dealt with in the past. It strips people of their rights. It makes a very powerful Premier omnipotent, and he wants it ran through the Parliament in place by December. What aspects concern you? I don't know where to start, Peter. Giving the most power-hungry politician in Australia licence to declare a pandemic, to declare certain individuals uh, by their race, by their political belief, by their gender, by their sexual orientation, uh, giving him the power to determine what he wants to do for an indefinite period of time, not the Cabinet, not his party room or caucus, not the Parliament, but him, one person giving one person that amount of power uh, doesn't appear to be anywhere, anything that I can imagine to be democratic about it. But that is what we have in Victoria. I've been saying this to your audience and to many audiences around Australia, particularly in Victoria, for a long time. This government, this Premier, is not just drunk on power, they are abusing it. They're abusing power. Democracy doesn't have a defence against people who abuse it like this. The way this Premier is abusing his position, abusing power, and bringing forward a bill like this where he's been negotiating with three key upper house independents since March, telling no one about it, and now wants to put this bill through in a week and a half, two weeks, that should tell every Victorian the character of the Premier, the soul of the government, and why it is just so important that at the next election mm. in Victoria, we change the government. There's been a lot of people, me included, critical that there was so much power vested in an unelected bureaucrat in uh, Brett Sutton. And on the face of it, listening to the commentary from the Premier today, he's arguing that this power shift now to an elected individual is a good thing. But the issue I have with that, it's power vested in one person only and it's bypassing 
all the processes we have in a representative democracy, like the cabinet, like the parliament, and that none of those disclosures are there. So yes, it goes from the bureaucrat to the politician, but it makes one politician almost a dictator in this state. Do you think people understand just exactly what's at stake with this legislation? Peter, don't judge the Victorian government by what they say, judge them by what they do. The seven day lockdown has lasted 80 days. We're just coming out of it. Everything they've told us about the coronavirus pandemic has turned out not to be the case. I can't remember who signed quarantine contracts that killed 800 people. The Premier has today said, oh, well, you wanted this. You wanted one person to be responsible. Most people did, me included, but that didn't mean to streamline a process that you put one person to have control, effectively un unparalleled control of the whole state. What we were asking for, what the state and I think people like yourself were asking for was a streamlining of state of emergency powers. But see how the government in Victoria then used that, people saying streamline the process, they use and abuse that whole discussion to become, all right, we'll streamline the process and while we're at it, will hand every piece of control over everyone's life to one man, to the Premier, unelected. No accountability by his caucus, his cabinet, by the parliament, ever. Once you hand it to him, he can keep reinstituting it after three months. I, I, I'm just flabbergasted. I, I'm flabbergasted that anyone, that any independent MP, that anyone from any media outlet anywhere in Australia would be caught up in this. And I'd just ask, Anyone watching who is maybe not from my side of politics, help us stop this grab for power. It is insanity. It is an abuse of power. We've never seen anything like it in Australia. And it will be very hard to change once this Premier puts it in power, in place. We have to stop it now. Well, just on that point, I mean, he's got the numbers in the lower house. That means obviously, you know, it'll pass there very rapidly. Of course, having the numbers means he's the government, but the upper house is a little bit different. We have a crossbench, but they have voted and supported him in the past. I think there's obviously been a legislative blood price uh, last year granted to them. I can spend a whole show on talking about the baubles that I think they've got. How do you fight it in the upper house when you don't have the numbers? What do you want Victorians to do? We need to lobby a number of those crossbench minor party MPs. Even with them, the government doesn't have a clear majority and the bill will fail if it gets to a tied vote. Peter, we can't just sit by, I can't sit by as a Victorian, forget my politics, as a Victorian and watch a bill as draconian like this pass a parliament, which then becomes a precedent for other parliaments around Australia. You know, people fought and died for our democracy. I am witnessing it here in Victoria fade away with some cheering from some elements of the Melbourne media, some complicity from smaller left-wing parties. And yet I, I just cannot sit by and allow this to go without a fight in the parliament. The Liberal and National parties won't. I know a number of other parties won't either because they also see this as, for what it is, as a naked grab for power. Mm. It's an abuse of power. It's got to be stopped. If it gets through, Matthew Guy, I've got to go on this point, but if it gets through the parliament, if you're elected, will you repeal these laws? Be one of the first things we do. It's an absolute ironclad guarantee. Laws like this will go immediately. I'll be elected to be the Premier of the state to run a democracy, to be in charge of a democracy. These laws run counter to that. We'll repeal them. All right, Matthew Guy, I'll leave it there. Thank you for your time. It's Matthew Guy there Thanks. from the Victorian State Parliament, which is sitting to consider those laws, and the Premier wants them passed quick smart.
inside, ladies. I'm bringing the peace. <laughs> I am so staying up past my bedtime. I've never felt power like this before. <laughs> 